Doch, Herr Danjasson. Mr. Chairman, I declare interest as a breast surgeon in private practice and my role as the elected president of Singapore Medical Association. In recent months, there have been articles and forum letters in the news highlighting the abuse of healthcare workers in Singapore. 25 months of COVID has placed immense social pressures on every single one of us. But being stressed should not be an excuse for patients to take on abusive behaviour towards healthcare workers or anyone for that matter. The number of harassment cases reported has been increasing yearly from 1,080 to 1,300 cases. I am glad that there is increasing awareness of this long-standing problem. Healthcare professionals place patients at the heart of all we do and service before self. But when it comes to abuse, it becomes a really difficult thing to express how one feels abused without feeling guilty or being derelict in our duty. If healthcare workers are given the training to recognise it and the organisational support to be able to call out abusive and manipulative behaviours from patients or their families, it will give us all more protection, peace of mind and the strength to keep on doing what we love best. Before you worry that healthcare workers overreact and claim that every patient complaint is an abuse, let me share two real-life examples. One, after a routine uneventful surgery on the day of discharge, a patient's children demanded that the ward staff arrange for daily food delivery to the patient at home because they're all too busy to do so. And quote, if anything should happen, it would be your fault. Unquote. Two, as a junior doctor, I once had to call a patient's son to explain why a surgery had to be postponed for a second time, once due to salt imbalance and once again due to unexpected fever. The son said, you are lucky I am not there, otherwise I will hang you, every single one of you. I am I'm certain that many healthcare workers have their own stories of abuse to share. Our professionalism mostly keeps us in check and stops us from posting on social media. And this is why there is such a skilled representation of cases of lapses in healthcare, because healthcare workers would do open disclosures when the medical error has happened. Yet when the abuser is the patient, who, who can we talk to? Who will believe us? Part of the problem is underreporting. Healthcare professionals in public healthcare institutions are categorised as public service workers, under the Protection from Harassment Act. Yet many healthcare workers may refrain from an official police report if they feel just, you know, it's a once-off event, they feel sorry that the patient is sick and not feeling well, or that families are worried, thereby excusing such behaviour. Another insight is that the type of emotional or verbal abuse that healthcare workers get can be just as elusive as that in an abusive relationship. We may not always recognise it, we just feel drained and guilty after meeting such patients or their families. We are afraid of speaking up because patients hold the power here. A complaint to the senior management or their MP may bring in undue social pressure to give in to unreasonable demands. For a doctor, an SMC complaint may take months or years to resolve. The media may splash a doctor's name across the main page and his or her reputation is ruined, even if found to be innocent. So what can be done? The Protection Against Harassment Act covers only public health care workers. It does not allow for immediate remedies to be taken. There must be zero tolerance of abuse on many different fronts. At the healthcare workers' level, one should have the professional option to terminate the patient care relationship after an encounter of abuse with transfer of care to another provider. At the institution level, there needs to be clear protocols for reporting and management of abuse cases, such as making a police report making CCTV evidence available and recalling of witnesses. As a country, we can all play a part to be courteous and kind to one another, to give basic respect and human decency. My vision for Singapore and even the world is for us to be kinder, sensible and tolerant of differences. Even as the world becomes divided over race, nationalities, vaccine status, etc., as individuals, let's be kind embrace the Singapore Kindness Movement and practice it in our daily lives. Everyone is going through their own personal hardships, which we may never fully understand. As Minister Wong said, let's build a more caring and inclusive society. I applaud Ministry of Health's written response on 10th Jan that states a zero-tolerance stance towards the abuse and harassment of healthcare workers. I hope that on the ground, we will see a greater push and enforcement of measures to ensure a safe environment. 
Mr Adrian Tan, current president of the Singapore Law Society, shared in a LinkedIn post in December regarding healthcare worker abuse that posed at a wide discussion and engagement from professionals across different sectors. Some in service industries brought up denial of service to abusive customers. This is such a foreign concept to most local healthcare workers. But a few friends who have worked overseas have shared that yes, their hospitals have provisions in place to turn away such visitors. These rare situations are typically for drunks or known drug addicts who come into the emergency department not for medical condition but to demand drugs and were clearly abusive, such as screaming, shouting or even spitting at staff. Maybe COVID has indeed made it timely for there to be stronger legislation to protect all healthcare workers against bullying and harassment. Please help us to help you. Thank you. Thank you.